This is Michael L. Dublin Sr. bringing you another word of encouragement. Just on this past Wednesday, most of the world celebrated Christmas as the birth of Christ Jesus. I know that again that there are people who just don't accept that as a day of celebration for a variety of reasons. But Jesus was born and that is worth celebrating. And for those who don't, it's really okay. But I want to remind you that those of us who do celebrate, we don't know when Jesus was born, but it's shudder to think that what would have happened had Jesus not been born. But according to Luke 2, Jesus was born. And when he did, the host of angels said in verse 14, peace on earth and goodwill towards all men. Peace on earth. At the time that Jesus was born, that was chaos and political upheaval, war going on, community upheaval. There was issues uh, within families, within a variety of relationships. And there, after all of the years that the world had existed, there in a manger, in a place of poverty, is Jesus born. He did not come in some kingdom that was surrounded by royalty, but that introduction, that portal in which he came unto the earth was very important in that it signified that God could identify, and he said he was coming, at least the angels did, for all mankind because the wars and the chaos that was in the souls and the minds and in the hearts and among the people was not pleasing to God. God did not create us to live in a life of chaos from the time we're born to the time we die. James later on asked us a question. He says, doesn't the wars that come from you come from within you? You quarrel, you argue, and he said those wars, don't they come from within us? So here we have the Prince of Peace for all mankind. James is identifying that our wars actually start within us. No matter how large or international the conflict, and whether it's over resources, military, territory, or whatever it is, all wars start in the heart of somebody. And in this situation, Jesus Christ gives the world an opportunity, and especially your world, to have peace. And yet, you and I often don't allow what he says and who he is, what he's done for us to guide us. So we go to church or we go to some assembly, uh, we even on Facebook or other social media entities with all this inspiration. And sometimes we're actually quoting scriptures, but we're not actually allowing Christ to transform our lives and to change us because he's the Prince of Peace within us. Whenever we are at war, we don't start off at war. There is usually a desire that we have that's unmet. When our desires are not met, they become a demand. And when they become a demand, we would do any and everything to get what we want. And once we get to the point that we're totally unsatisfied because we haven't gotten what we demanded, then that desire and that demand becomes an idol almost. It's, it's, it supersedes everything. And we will go to church or we will go to the assembly. We will do all of those things, but we've forgotten that we're supposed to be peacemakers. We're capable of being peacemakers. And we really don't want to live in the wars that we live that's internal that we war on other people. But we are constantly having to be reminded that the Jesus, that Jesus, and the birth that he came to bring on this earth was so that we would have options that we would be transformed and changed, and that there was peace on earth with all mankind. Now, I can't change the world, neither can you. But the world I can change is the world in which I live. 
It's in my household. It is in my relationship with my wife, with my sons and daughters and grandchildren, different members of the church, colleagues in which I work in the substance abuse field, fellow preachers and fellow members of the church, and but also everybody I come in contact with. I don't want to be a peacemaker just for those who are like-minded in our love for Christ. I want to be a peacemaker for everybody. And I get that from John 3, 16. So here is what I want to remind you of. If there is a war going on inside you, Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. But he leads us to go back on the inside of us. Where did that war start? What desire did you have? What desire did you have that became a demand? And when did that demand become an idol or a point that pushed you so much that you began to attack others because you did not get what you wanted? May have been a very simple thing. Sometimes you just want peace in the house. But when you demand peace and continue to demand that they don't get it, what do we do? We go to war. So we start bothering people. We start fussing at them. We start saying negative things, which in turn ignites them, and now you have a household at war. What about in your home? How are you going to develop emotional intimacy? How are you going to get connected if we have not put out those fires of those desires that we wanted that our spouse does not meet? So we're going to wrap this up by saying that you can have a Merry Christmas every day of your life if you remember not only was Jesus born, but Jesus taught us how to have peace. He taught us in the Sermon on the Mount. He taught us the principles. But you and I have to actualize them. We have to desire them, and we desire to put them in place. What desires do you have that you made a demand that has now turned into a full-fledged war? Confess it to Christ Jesus. Begin to process. Uh, imagining yourself no longer being at war within and war without. Make sure that you decide that you've had enough and allow Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace to be the Prince of Peace within you. God bless you. You've had enough war. Live at peace, peacemaker.